Okay. Okay, I'd like to uh, bring to order the uh, Willington Inland Wetland and Watercourses Commission meeting for, uh, I, I had the uh, agenda up here, but now it's gone. Today is the 26th, right? 25th. 25th. Um, whoops. I'm having more difficulties here. Do you want to have Patrick go through it? Sure, that'll work. Okay. Uh, calling to order the uh, Willington Inland Wetlands and Watercourse Commission today, July 25th, 2022. The time is now 6.42. Call to order. Uh, all commissioners uh, are present. Uh, there's no alternates to seat. Um, there are new, new, no new applications to be received. Uh, next item on the agenda is the approval of, of minutes from April 25th, 2022. Um, I didn't see those attached to, um, the email. Neither did I. Hey, Patrick. Yeah. Can we move that to the end of the meeting? We want to make a motion. I'll make a motion that we move the approval of the April 25th, 2022 minutes um, uh, to just prior to adjournment. So like old business? Yes. Oh, that's good. Thank you. Is there a second? I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, next item on the agenda is public hearing. We have no um, items uh, requiring a public hearing at this moment. So we'll move on to uh, new business. Uh, application TH22-2, timber harvest at zero Daleville Road, 17-029-0A, um, owner Lawrence Becker, applicant James Halloran. Is there um, someone uh, to support this application to speak tonight? Yeah, hi guys, I'm James Halloran. I'm a forester um, at Permatreat Sawmill in Durham, Connecticut. Hi James, welcome. Thanks. You just wanna briefly um, go over your application and describe um, uh, the activity that you're proposing? Yeah, so we're doing a timber harvest there with Lawrence Becker. He wants a selective harvest done. Um, his trees are getting mature, and he also noticed some dead and dry, dying oak trees and ash trees. So he's trying to get some forest management in there. Um, he's logged it before, I believe, like 20, 30 years ago. There's um, some old woods roads already established that we're planning on using again. Um, the landing will be off of Daleville Road. I'm hoping to start that this summer while it's dry. Mike, can we pull up the uh, application and get a better idea? Um, I believe there was a site plan that was provided. Yep. Thank you. Um, so what's what's your uh, proposed method of, of harvest and all that? Your, your activity. Can you guys see that? Yes. Yes. Sorry, I just missed that question. Someone was calling my phone and it muted. James, can you please um, go over uh, uh, like a description and means and methods of your proposed activity? What kind of equipment are you going to use? Uh, what, what kind of trees are you targeting? Is it going to be all the trees? Okay. Yep. So we're planning on bringing an eight wheel uh, forwarder that has a harvester right on the uh, machine itself. So it grabs a tree, cuts it down, uh, fells it, and then puts puts it on the ground and chops it up, and then it can put the logs right in the back of the machine. Uh, and then there'll also be some trees that need to be just felled with a chainsaw, typical method. Um, the owner wants pretty much a diameter limit cut. So I believe it's 12 inch and up can be cut. The rest will be left. Some of the smaller stuff will need to be cut to make room for the trails and to facilitate felling the larger trees. But um, he's pretty much just targeting the mature stuff. He's a, he's a steward of uh, just more than this parcel in Wellington. And he's always had an interest in forest management. So 
he thought it was time for this parcel. And uh, so, yeah, the landing will be as indicated on there. It will be picked up by uh, pretty, pretty much all just triaxle log truck. I don't anticipate any um, trailers being loaded. Uh, and yeah, there's no wetlands crossings, no stream crossings. There's a stream in the northern section of the parcel, but we're just going to exclude that. Even though it's it's pretty dry at the moment, but I think it's marked as a stream. So these are all existing logging trails. Uh, the main, trails? yeah. So that main one from the landing, roadside landing up, is established. The kind of one that runs east west or northeast southwest and then you pretty much we just want to try to follow the flat areas of the land to establish the newer trails mm -hmm. and um if the road starts getting beat up or we're, we're anticipating a lot of rain we'll definitely place water bars along that main skid trail that leads to the landing because there is some topography there some slope But besides that, I don't anticipate any other uh, wetlands or soil issues there. And um, the your estimated like duration, how long do you think you're going to be in there for? Uh, this will probably take a couple, like two to four months, I'd assume. OK. Yep. Uh, the weather is always the biggest factor. Uh, so this lot is pretty dry. You can in the wetter months, but still we have a crew that can pretty much get out there, I think, by the end of August. So that's the plan for now. Sounds good to me. Yeah, it sounds like, you know, um, maintaining, ma maintaining the forest um, in proper fashion. Yep. Yeah, we're familiar with the Wellington Forestry Regulations. Um, the crew involved recently did a job on um, Schofield Road. I don't know if any of you guys got to take a visit up there, but they did a pretty good job over there. And then obviously you're going to leave some, some well, uh, you know, limbs and stuff. Are you going to, what's your plan to do with those? Yeah, so we fell the tree and pretty much harvest the saw logs. And then the tops will get left, but they'll also get ran over or lopped down. So they mostly get left. We don't harvest the whole tree. So they'll be protecting the uh, undergrowth from the deer and such. Yeah, that's actually a great point. It's effective at kind of deterring the deer. And I have noticed some oak uh, saplings trying to grow on the forest floor. So hopefully it helps them. Okay, so there'll be a, a little bit of re regeneration to allow more light in to allow the younger trees to grow. Yeah, correct. Yep. It's pretty uh, It's pretty dense in there. Like It hasn't been harvested, I think, at least 25 years or so. Okay. So things have had time. Right. <clears throat> so you're going to be taking out a few uh, softwoods, right? Like uh, hemlock and... Uh... Pine. Yeah, there, yep, there's some hemlock and pine on the. Sorry, I just got another call, but yeah, um, will be hardwood and softwood taken. And then, um, yeah, you, you mentioned before, so you'll be following the, the DEP's uh, BMP for water, water quality uh, associated with forest harvest. Correct. Well, it sounds pretty straightforward, everyone. Is there any other further discussion? I'm good. No, I'm fine. Um, would someone like to make a, a motion? I well, move that uh, we accept um, application TH-22-2 timber harvest at Zero Dale. Have I got the, yeah, I've got the right one. Zero Daleville Road. Uh, seventeen dash twenty nine oh two nine dash oh a 
as uh, described in the application. Is there a second on that I'll motion? Second. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, moving on. Um, don't go anywhere, James. Uh, application <laughs> TH22-3 Timber Harvest at 142 Daleville Road, 12-007-00, um, owner David and Margaret E. Gonkowski, applicant James Holleran. The floor is yours, James. Yep, so that's the... Uh... So is this property located um, in similar, close to this other parcel? Yeah, they, they, um, they border each other. The Becker parcel to the north and the Jankowski to the south on Daleville Road. So yeah, that's um same crew, basically do one side, then the other. Uh, that side does have some uh, more uh, stream crossing involved. There's a ditch right by the road that needs to be crossed. We're going to use bridge mats to kind of get over it so not, not, uh, the machine won't be in the ditch at all. And then uh, do, we have, do we have the map up for that one? Yep. So that's second. right next to the loading area? Yeah, it's, it's probably about within 20, 25 feet of the road. In the landing, yeah. All right. So yeah, that's just south of the last one we were looking at. Can you see that okay? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it's this in question, the uh, kind of the orange triangles there. Yep, yeah, that's the location of the ditch. Um, it's it's I've never seen it wet. It's it's dry now, and I think it's kind of just overflow from a pond. Okay. And but we're still gonna put up a crossing there in case it does get wet. With the with the tim timber mats? Correct, yep. Bridge mats. And then there's also, there's also a oh go ahead. Okay, I was gonna say there's also a, a trail of roads that's kind of set up in that parcel as well, especially to the south. So um, we're gonna follow that to get to the southern end of the parcel. And then kind of follow the topography on the, the northwestern side to make it make our way up the hill. Gotcha. It's a pretty gentle hill with uh, like valleys and then steps up valleys. So again, this is a, a targeted um, harvest. Yep, targeted towards pretty much the same thing. I mean, the woodlot doesn't the composition of the woods doesn't change much from that first parcel to this one. Right. Uh, there's a, a bit more of hemlock component in there in the southern side, but it's still kind of the same objective. Kind of thin it out, take the mature and best form trees, and kind of clean out some of the stuff that's competing and make way for the best. And uh, same machinery will be used, same crew, uh, same idea with the Tracks a log truck, uh, eight wheel forwarder. And it looked like it said in your application, you're gonna leave a, a, a buffer around um, the, the pond there. Correct, yep. Yeah, nothing will be felled that can fall into that pond. Okay. It's usually like a, a whole tree's length is left from the pond out. All right. So there's no wetlands anywhere else on the piece, right? It's just that ditch crossing that has the marked uh, stream, but no marked wetlands. Right. Okay. And this will be <clears throat> conducted kind of like in concert with the other activity. Yeah, it should be one and then the other. I'm not sure which one to uh, right. we plan on starting with, but since you have the assets out there, yeah, yep, that makes sense. Yep, got the borders all marked to make sure we stay within the borders, okay. the boundaries. Yep. 
Well, I have no further questions of the applicant. Is there any further discussion? No, I'm set. No, I'm good. Thanks. Will someone um, care to make a motion? I just want to know. Note, can I just note quickly that ditch that he's referring to is not shown as a, a wetland on our wetland map. Um, so I just want to be clear that mm -hmm. um, we're not picking that up as a wetland. No, it looks like it's probably just like a intermittent, intermittent. water course mm -hmm. um, associated with that pond there, even though the, the map overlay is a little off on the polygon, but um, you know, with their management practice using those, those timber mats, that's the, the best way to, to keep the integrity of that, of that, um, that uh, ditch or um, channel. Um, Let's call it a swale. So that's that's the that's the best BMP to use to cross something like that. So I have I have no issue with that. Mm -hmm. Yep, Mark, do you want to do this one or shall I? Oh, I think you do a fine job, Dave. <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, I'd like to um, approve um, application number TH-22-3 timber harvest at 142 Daleville Road, 12-007-0001. Um, owner David and Margaret E. Gankowski, applicant James Halloran. Is there a second in the house? I will second it. What a guy. All in favor. <laughs> Aye. 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 <clears throat> All right, James. Sounds like um, you got a good plan. So. All right. Appreciate yeah. it, guys. Thank yeah. you. Right, thanks, James. Thank you. Next time on the agenda is old business. Um, Mike, if you could... Um, do you have access to the April 25th meeting minutes? Yeah, I do. Yep. You want me to pull them up? Sure. If you could, please. Actually, it I would, could probably. Yeah, Peggy uh, probably sent them out back when they were done in April. Um, so I can pull up, look at it online here, too. Agendas, minutes. Go all the way back to April. Holy mackerel. <laughs> Are you looking at them on your own or should I leave it on the screen? No, you can leave them on there. I'll leave them up, please. Okay. Let me know when to move. Minutes, April. <gasps> You want me to go to the next page? Yes, please. What was that? I just moved the minutes to the second page. Yeah, I'm just reading through this again. So that reminds me that they haven't even, they're doing this later in the fall. Well, it looked all right to me. Yeah. Yeah, I'll start with them. I, yes, I think so. I don't see anything that needs to be changed. Sounds like you want to make a motion, Mark. Oh, boy, would I ever. Um, <laughs> let's see. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of April 25th, 2022, um, with no changes. I will second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Aye. The, the, the minutes have been approved. Uh, <laughs> next item on the agenda, correspondence. Mike, do you have any correspondence to share with the uh, commission? Um, nothing, nothing official as far as correspondence. I guess what I'll say is, and I guess we may bleed into a little bit of uh, staff report and discussion, but we are in the, I think, uh, last sort of home stretch with loves. So we're in the process of going through and making sure all the boxes are checked. Um, so they're gonna be pro providing us with copies of their state approvals for um, wastewater and well. Um, we're going through and getting the substantial completion certifications from the engineer for the site. Um, and then we were on, Chris and I were on site today um, looking at kind of where things are, uh, what outstanding items exist. Um, so over the next couple of days, week or so, we're going to be receiving all of those various pieces of information, um, many of which are required by the Wetland Commission's approval. Um, so we're working through that and those, those documents will be coming in. Um, we're going to be uh, holding a, a bond to make sure that ENS and landscaping and all the items related to the site are established, essentially not giving them credit for um, work done outside of the scheduling for you know planting things in the correct time of year so that we don't go out there in October and find mm -hmm. that these things are dead. Sure. Um, I think so that's we're, yeah. So, um, that's kind of what we're working through now. They've been telling us they're ready and want to open for the last four weeks. So I think this time they might actually be correct. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we'll be receiving a lot of that documentation in the next couple of days. Um, how did things look as far as like soil stabilization, bank stabilization with some of the disturbance areas? Um, from what we saw today and what we've seen the last couple of times we've been on there, everything looks really tight. Um, we haven't really noted any issues with that. We haven't had any failures of the ENS controls throughout the project. Um, we had one issue where someone had gone out to the state's forest site on a weekend and saw some of the, the fencing that was down, but that was because they were working on that day and they were they were doing something. So they took it down to do whatever work needed to be done and it was back up. Okay. So it was just kind of a right place, right time. Um, they, we really have not had any, any failures or, or, or any real um, issues. Okay. But we want to make sure that the, the, the seed and everything continues to establish throughout, you know, the driest part of the year. So we're, we're going to try to, cover that's, that through an establishment bond. That, that's what I was getting at. You know, it's like very, very dry. And yeah. even my established grass isn't growing. So I want to make sure that, you know, with the dry conditions, if they, you know, that some of those exposed banks, if they don't have any vegetation on it now, that, you know, that remains stable or they have a, a plan to keep it stable. Yeah. And so that that's definitely what we're working on. Um, we found out today, not that it really matters on paper, but the person who did the landscaping and plantings is the same person responsible for maintenance of the site once it goes live. Okay. So they're, they're, there's a, they have some familiarity with the, with the property. So, you know, you hope that it makes things a little bit more cohesive. Yeah. Um, right. Plus they have buy-in too. They want to make sure their stuff grows, right. You know, or else they'll be on the hook for even more and right. They're losing money. Yeah. So, um, so engineer certification, state and uh, state approvals, obviously final as built. Um, you know, all of those things are are eminent. Okay. Yeah, I know uh, folks that live over there are anxious to see their roads open again. So. Yeah, it's uh, the challenge is that there's activity on both sides of the road, and from because these this equipment is in the road and um it in the beginning you know the road was so deconstructed that 
to have vehicles and equipment traffic on a road that wasn't constructed, what it would have done is slowed down their progress and made people sort of traveling on a road that we were not sure would be adequate from a, because you remember Polster Road beforehand, it was super narrow. Yeah. And so to have these guys trying to realign and reconstruct the road while people are using it, including buses and other things was a challenge. So, um, you know, we wanted to make sure it was completed and we didn't want to take the road. We didn't want it to be open because then it's construction equipment happening on a road yeah, that the town. Road. Exactly. So they just oh, paid it, uh, this week, I think. Um, so now we're going to get a road turned over to the town that hasn't had, hasn't had construction traffic and stuff traveling over it for the last four, five months. Mm -hmm. So our hope is it'll, it'll make for a better product. Brand new, brand new road. Okay. Correct. That sounds like the kind of the right sequencing. It's just inconvenience, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, so does that conclude the correspondence slash staff report and discussion? Um, the I only other, whoop. You go ahead first, Mike. The only other thing that I'll mention is that I did hear from Kathy Demers about a, a professional membership that the Wetlands Commission historically shares with the Conservation Commission. And so given timing, you know, I, I told her that I didn't see it would be a problem for this commission to be included in their membership. And so basically the two commissions will share the cost. It's, I think, $100. Um, that was the only other thing that came in. And what's that, that membership Rick? for? I, uh, hold on one second. Let me pull it up. I don't want to misspeak. Uh, Was it cause? Uh, hold on one second. Um, Kakawick. Yep, it was Kakawick. So it's it's one hundred and twenty dollars for both commissions to be a member. So they basically we each split it sixty dollars because it's a you can have a two commission rate. So unless anybody has an issue with that, it'll be a $60 debit to the commission's memberships and trainings account line. And what is this a membership of? The CACIWIC, the Connecticut Association of Inland Wetland Commissions. Okay. And Inland Wetland and Conservation Commissions. Okay. Certainly is something we ought to belong to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that, that was it. Okay. So I was just going to ask, um, what's going on with this warehouse thing? Um, the In planning and zoning words or less. <laughs> planning and zoning commission received an application for zone change for a hundred plus acre piece of property on River Road. The public hearing was opened uh, last week on the nineteenth, and. Um, was continued and will, will continue on August 16th. So it's right now it is a zone change application. Right, okay. So, so that if the application is approved, um, they would then have to go through their traditional approvals, including DOT, special permit with planning and zoning, wetlands would come here and DDB, health department, water, well, all that stuff. right. So that is all subsequent to a zone change should it be approved. So they they would show up here sort of just like Loves and, and the other commercial projects would. Okay. I just, um, I'm a curious guy, you know? Yeah, all the application information is on the, the agenda and is online you can also swing by the office and we can get you a paper copy if that's easier okay great thank well, you if that, Mike. if that concludes the staff report and discussion we'll move on to public comment i see there's a few folks uh online here anyone from the public wishing to speak or have questions for the commission hi <clears throat> nicholas tella 49 myrtle uh, just want to touch base. I saw that um, Kathleen Demers had uh, 
written looks like a 19 page uh, comment. I wasn't seeing anything from you guys. Uh, I know it was representing the Willington and Conservation Commission. Wasn't sure if you guys had already started looking into it. Uh, Looks like seven pages of just her writing different policies and summary and such, and then another 12 pages of maps and such, um, demonstrating that this project should not be coming here. Uh, what, wasn't sure. What is this wasn't, in regards to, sir? I'm sorry. The, the, the warehouse. I wasn't sure if you guys have uh, done the same thing since uh, the Conservation Commission looked into it already. Uh, if not, it would be nice to see you guys uh, do the same thing as what Kathleen Demers did. With so the we can't oh. do that. Yeah, the process why, we have. Why, why can she do that? Uh, that that committee do that, and you guys not? I don't understand. That. We, we, are, we are a regulatory body of the town, so we have established wetland and forestry and aquifer protection regulations. That when an application come in comes in, uh, we evaluate that um, against to, the to the established regulations. So we're we're almost like a regulatory body. So we can't, we, we, have, can't to follow have, the law. we have to follow the law of the town. We can't just- Yeah, we can't come up with feelings. opinions before something's, when something's not before us. We have to uh, be unprejudiced, uh, like judges, sort of. All right, well, that's, unfor that's unfortunate to hear that you guys are not gonna be proactive. I hope to see you guys proactive. <laughs> we can't be, and that's, we that's can't always stand there, sir. Thank you. If we say anything, we can't rule on this. It's about being proactive, but thank you. <laughs> well, that was nice. <laughs> You're welcome. That's all right. We're going to get more <laughs> of that. Yes. Is there anyone else out there? I see. There's Ralph and... Someone else? Kelsey Allward. I'm gonna, anybody else has anything to say? Unmute now. Oh, I see, there's Ralph. I'm not gonna say anything. Hi, Ralph. I, I'm just an observer. <laughs> And I see Mr. Gonkowski, we've went through your application, sir. So that was approved for your uh, timber harvest. Does this gentleman wish to speak? He's got his headphones on here. TEW02003. Uh, good evening. I don't know if you can hear me or not. We can. Yes. Um, okay. My name is Thomas Worthley. I, uh, I work for the University of Connecticut, and I am the managing forester for Yukon Forest. And um, uh, I am sorry that I am late to your meeting. I heard about the meeting. I came to the Willington Town Hall only to find out at, for a 730 meeting, because that's what was published on your website only to find out that this was an online meeting that started at 6.30. And so um, because we are a neighbor to the proposed timber harvest, I figured I would uh, do my due diligence and come to uh, the meeting just to hear what was happening. And um, that's why I'm here and it's already happened. So I guess uh, uh, thank you very much but for being recognized, but I guess I don't have uh, uh, anything else. I um, I would like to say that the uh, the timber harvests are at the far end of um, old of um, Daleville Daleville Road, and uh, the Yukon Forest is at the unpaved end, which is quite a ways away from there, actually. Well, I think this gentleman said that he was a neighbor, a neighboring or uh, well, he says butter. the Yukon Forest is is neighboring. He didn't say a butter, did he? Oh, okay. Is he still to, there? To my knowledge, we're in a butter to 142 Daleville Road. Mike, he brought a good point. Can you, um, he said it was uh, mispublished. Is that correct? So the commission, I mean, our meetings are at 7.30. The agenda was published as a special meeting for 6.30. 
if you go to town hall right now, you're going to see the contents of the land use office in the meeting room because we've had to move everything out for some work that's happening. Um, so the, the meeting was published as a special meeting at 630. Our regular meetings are at 730. So I'm looking online right now. It says agendas, uh, Inland Wetlands course, July 25th, 630. Right. I obviously looked in the wrong place. I looked at your calendar. I saw 7.30 town hall, uh, all the dates listed. And so, you know, was my okay. assumption. And so that's, uh, um, you know, I just obviously didn't look in the right place. So that's well, all. We apologize for that. That's well, as, as, a for, as a forester, uh, do you have any input on our forestry regulations? <laughs> well, they want to open that can of worms or? I happen. <laughs> well, I happen to uh, um, be a member of the um, in the Wetlands Commission in Haddam, which is also one of the towns which has its own forestry regulations. And I can tell you very, very honestly that ours are very similar to yours. <laughs> you copied ours, eh? Well, not exactly, <laughs> but uh, we used them as an outline. Absolutely, yes. Excellent. We we worked hard on those things for three years. And I just will jump in and say, if you if you call the office tomorrow or you email us, we can send you the application with the maps and their um, operation. You know what what they're going to do. We can send all that to you, so you can take a look at it um, for either project. Well that, well, that would be great. If, uh, if you're willing to do that, that would yeah. be very helpful to me because I know I'll get questions. Sure, it's, yeah. a, it's, a, just, just, it's a selective harvest. It's not gonna be a clear cut or anything like that. They're gonna go on and get some, some deformed trees, some yeah. you know, older disease trees to keep with the, the forest. They're talking up. 12 inches and up. Yeah. Okay, 12 inches and up is in my, in my book is a commercial clear cut. And mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, uh, we'll we'll see what it turns out to be. Is uh, James Halloran a certified forester? I believe so. Okay, I'll I'll look that up. Okay, well, he, there, uh, was I, number, there was he had a number. Yes. Of, on his uh, application, is okay. a number one two four four. One two four four. Okay, well, we'll uh, we'll see what it is. But uh, you know, a diameter limit cut is not generally a silvicultural operation mm -hmm. at all. So, no, they they, okay. they did not have a plan. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, um, like I said, I'll get questions, and and if uh, if if I have copies of the, uh, the the publicly shared information, why that will be more than sufficient. And I really appreciate your willingness to uh, to share that. Of course, You're welcome. Have a nice okay. evening. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. You're Thank welcome. you. Okay. Uh, entertaining any other um, members of the public that would wish to, to speak at this time? I don't see any hands up for anybody in the chat. Okay, that concludes the uh, July 25th, 2020 uh, Wellington Inland Wetland and Water Courses Commission, do I have uh, uh, a motion to, to close the meeting? So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Well, thank you, everyone.